update on the wildfires. That's right, Brenda and Nina. We are tracking two major wildfires this morning, both forcing people to evacuate. So let's start with the go now orders that are in place in Lane County because of the sweet Creek fire. It's spreading right now in the Mapleton area. That's about 40 miles west of Eugene. It's already burned about 300 acres. So anyone who lives on Hadsel Creek Road needs to leave immediately. And anyone who lives on Sweet Creek Road needs to be ready to go at a moment's notice. The second fire we're following, the White River Fire. Evacuation orders still in effect for people near that fire southeast of Mount Hood. So that fire has burned more than 14,000 acres to this point, and it is still only 10% contained. Thankfully, we can tell you that at this point, no homes have been damaged. Evacuation orders, though, are in place for everyone living in the Juniper Flat area to Highway 97, and that includes the Pine Grove community. So we are going to bring Rod Hill into the mix for the first time this morning right now. Rod, let's talk about the conditions that firefighters are going to be dealing with today. Well, good morning. You know, uh, the White River fire and many of these, most of these other fires in Oregon were in fact started by lightning a couple of weeks back. Since that time, the weather hasn't been bad, and we'll continue to see fairly comfortable temperatures out there today. Let me stand this way. We'll show you this map full screen. This is just current temperatures, but it's a big deal that we've had these cooler numbers. We're generally in the 50s across the state this morning, a little bit warmer in the Dallas and Pendleton, but these are, are nice numbers. And this will be another comfortable day with uh, most areas either in the 70s or just getting up to 80. What I want to focus on is what's coming up, the September outlook. We'll talk more about this during the show this morning. But look at the heat. All of the West expected to see well above normal temperatures. And that big switch to hot weather arrives tomorrow. So this is Portland seven day, 88 tomorrow, maybe 90. And then could it be 90 or better all the way into Labor Day? If so, that's a late summer heat wave that quite frankly, we've never seen before. And it's gonna mean very hot temperatures in Central and Eastern Oregon as well. We'll talk about that in more detail coming up. All right, Rod, thank you. We'll see you soon. In Portland, tensions around protests, boy, they remain very high after a deadly shooting on Saturday night. Last night, police declared an unlawful assembly as a crowd of around 150 people gathered on East Burnside. It's at the building shared by police and Multnomah County Sheriff's Office. Some people in the crowd tried setting fires. They threw rocks at responding officers. At one point, we saw police charge the crowd and start taking people into custody. And this morning, police announcing they made 29 arrests, including two people who were armed with loaded handguns. Now, tensions are high across the city, as you can imagine, after a deadly shooting Saturday night. This happened as a caravan of Trump supporters clashed with counter protesters. And as of this morning, there have been no arrests in that shooting case. There is speculation as to who was involved, but police have not released any names. KGW's Bryant Clerkley joining us live this morning from downtown with the latest on the case for us. Good morning, Bryant. Good morning, Nina. And authorities say that a man that was supporting a rally for President Trump was shot in the chest in this area and died at the scene. The victim has not been identified, but KGW spoke with Patriot prayer leader Joey Gibson, who confirmed the man was a good friend and supporter of the group. Patriot Prayer is a right is a right wing group based out of Vancouver, Washington. The shooting followed a car rally in support of the president on Saturday, where hundreds drove through downtown with pro-Trump signs and American flags. There was quickly friction between them and counter protesters. Trump supporters were seen using bear spray and paintball guns aimed at those on the street. Then just before 9 p.m. shots were fired and the man was killed. Detectives spent hours at the scene and are working to gather witness statements and video to build the case, but so far no arrest. A human being lost their life last night and it's critical that everyone refrain from conjecture and allow us to gather the evidence and statements needed to hold the person who did this responsible for this heinous act. On social media, there's a lot of speculation about what led up to this and what happened, but authorities do not want people to make assumptions right now. And Brian, the governor is also kind of releasing her plan to end the violence. Tell us about that. 
Yes, that's right. Now, Governor Kate Brown says plans to send state troopers back into the city to assist police, and those troopers will be wearing body cameras. The governor is also asking Clackamas and Washington counties, along with the city of Gresham, to send officers to help. In addition, she says the FBI and U.S. Attorney's Office will commit more resources for criminal investigations. And finally, the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office will work to keep people facing violent charges in custody and the district attorney will also prosecute serious crimes like arson and physical violence. All right, Bryant Clerkley live downtown for us. Thank you. And we're going to have more on Saturday shooting throughout the show, including reaction from President Trump and Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden. That's coming up in our next half hour. You can find the latest anytime online at KGW.com. Well, police say the violent protests here in Portland have made them slow to respond to other crimes. So, Brenda, there's a family in Northeast Portland that's dealing with that right now because they say someone shot up their home, hitting it at least 20 times early yesterday morning, and then they say it took what seemed like forever for police to get there. KGW's Christelle Kumwe has more. It's a bullet fragment. It looks like it's the casing off of a 9mm round. Bullet holes riddle the outside and the inside of Leslie and Herman Barnes' Northeast Portland home. I'm a native Portlander. Multi-generations have been here, but um, I never thought I would experience anything like this. Neighbors heard gunshots early Sunday morning around 2 a.m. Fortunately, the family was not home at the time, but counted at least 20 bullet holes in and around the house. Why someone would do something so senseless? That's the biggest thing. Why would they pick our house out of all the homes on this street? Why they would pick ours, you know, because we have neighbors on both sides. Their homes are not shut, but our house is. Barnes says at least two of their neighbors called Portland police when they first heard the shots. Police did not show up. Then the Barnes called again around 11 a.m. when they returned home. They said when we called that they were busy, you know, but I don't know what kind of busy. But you mean to tell me you can't send an officer by to take a report, take some photographs, collect some evidence? How hard is that? Barnes says police eventually showed up around 7 p.m. Sunday, roughly 17 hours after the first call. Someone could have been in here bleeding, dead, or what else during that time. No one checked. No police officer came at all. The barn do not know why they were targeted, but can only think of one possible reason. We are the only black homeowners that I know of that are on this street. My neighbors to either side of me are Caucasian Americans, we're African American, and they chose to shoot up our house. And I hate to drop, jump to a conclusion, but that's what I feel like, because what else? I have no enemies that would be shooting up my home in the middle of the night. Shell casing, bullet casing, and actual bullets were still on the scene long after the incident. The Barnes have lived in their Northeast home for about two years, but maybe not for much longer. Don't plan to stay here for a while because we don't feel safe. Crystal Kumwe, KGW News. Now to the latest on the pandemic. The U.S. has surpassed 6 million COVID infections. The jump from 5 to 6 million took just 22 days. Here in Oregon, health officials are reporting another 269 new cases. We're tracking those infections on this graph, and as you can see, the number of daily cases is trending downward in recent weeks. So far, more than 26,000 cases have been reported across Oregon. Another four deaths were also reported yesterday, bringing the state total to 458. Well, the clock is ticking on Oregon's temporary ban on commercial and residential evictions. It's set to expire on September 30th. Governor Brown announced the moratorium back in April, helping people during the height of the pandemic. Right now, landlords can't evict anyone who can't afford to pay rent. A local attorney says if you're worried about paying rent in October, you may not want to pay rent in September. Here's why. Because you uh, have a big grace period for September's rent. You can put that on hold and pay it off anytime before the end of March of next year. If you paid it for September instead and couldn't come up with October's rent, then on the 8th of the month, the landlord is gonna be able to give you a termination notice for non-payment. And if you didn't get that paid by, for example, the end of the 11th, then on the 12th of October, the landlord would be able to file an eviction case against you and you would be in hot water. Under the moratorium, people have until the end of March of 2021 to make all the rent payments they've missed this year. 
All right, Brenda, we're going to get a quick traffic note here before we get to Rod Hill. The top deck of the steel bridge in downtown Portland is back open right now. The bridge, as a lot of you know, has been closed for the past four weeks as TriMet worked to replace signals, switches, and all 9,000 feet of max rails that go across the bridge. Uh, the work wasn't completed that fast. If they were working that fast, it would have gotten done in about two days. But <laughs> a time lapse there to show all the work that has been done on the bridge over the past month.